وإذا أصابك عام سنة فدعوته أنبته الله أنبته ها لك وإذا كنت بأرض بأرض قفر أو فلات فظلت راحل رحلتك فدعوته ردها عليه قال كنت أحد إليه قال لا تسبن أحدا قال فما سببت فما سببت بعده حرا ولا عبدا ولا بعيرا ولا شاتا ولا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا وأن تكلم أخاك وأنت منبسط إليه وجهك وجهك إن ذلك من الم إن ذلك من المعروف ورفع إزارك إلى نصف الساق فإن أبيت فإلى الكعبين وإياك وإسبال الإزار فإنها من المخيلة وإن الله لا يحب المخيلة وإن وإن امرئ شتمك وعيرك بما يعلم فيك فلا تعيره بما تعلم فيه فإنما وبال ذلك عليه رواه أبو داود والترمذي من المحترم دوست وزيز بزرگو من عفزرات کے سامنے ایک طويل رواية نقل کی ہے صاحب نريتد اي حديث which is narrated by حضرت جابر ابن سليم رضي الله عنه تو یہ جابر ابن سليم خود اپنے بارے میں فرماتے ہیں کہ ایک مرتبہ انہوں نے جو ہے یہ غالباً غزوہ خندق کے موقع پر تھا کہ وہ آئے تو دیکھا کہ لوگ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے اردگرد بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں تو انہوں نے پوچھا کہ من ہادا لوگوں سے پوچھا کہ یہ کون ہے چونکہ ایک بندہ ہے اور اس کے اردگرد لوگ بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں تو انہوں نے پوچھا کہ من ہادا یہ کون ہے تو پھر لوگوں نے جواب میں کہا کہ رسول اللہ یہ اللہ کے رسول ہے اللہ کے پیغمبر صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم تو یہ جابر ابن سلیم رضی اللہ عنہ فرماتے ہیں کہ میں گیا اور میں نے کہا علیہ السلام یا رسول اللہ علیہ السلام یا رسول اللہ تو پہلی مرتبہ انہوں نے کہا علیہ السلام یا رسول اللہ تو آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے جواب نہیں دی تو دوسری مرتبہ انہوں نے کہا کہ علیہ السلام یا رسول اللہ تو پھر بھی آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے جواب نہیں دی اور پھر فرمایا آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے کوئی جواب نہیں دی بلکہ یہ فرمایا کہ لا تقل علیہ السلام علیہ السلام نہ کہو Why you saying علیہ السلام کو علیہ السلام نہ کہو چونکہ یہ مردو کا تحیہ ہے تحیت الموتا یہ مردو کا جب آپس میں باتچیت ہوتی ہے جب اللہ تعالیٰ کی طرف سے ایجاد تو وہ اس طرح آپس میں ایک دوسرے کو سلام کرتے ہیں علیہ السلام نام پھر اس کے بعد علیہ السلام کہتے ہیں ہمارے یہاں رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے پھر ان کو تعلیم فرمائی کہ کل السلام علیہ تم کہو السلام علیہ علیہ السلام نہ کہو تو پھر جابر ابن یہ جو صحابی ہے جابر ابن سلیم فرماتے ہیں کہ میں نے پوچھا انتا رسول اللہ کیا آپ اللہ کے رسول ہو آئیو دا میسنجر آف اللہ تو رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا انا رسول اللہ ہاں میں اللہ کا میں اس اللہ کا پیغمبر ہو کہ اذا اصابک ضر فدعوته کشفه عنک اس پاک ذات کے طرف سے میں پیغام لے کے آیا ہوں کہ جس پاک ذات کو اگر تم کسی مصیبت میں پکارو تو وہ تمہاری مصیبت کو دور کر دے I am the messenger of that being who if whenever you are in trouble whenever you go through any problems in your life you call on to him and he will remove your 
worries and difficulties. وَإِذَا أَصَابَكَ عَامُ سَنَةٍ فَدَعَوْتَهُ أَنْبَتَهَا And whenever you go through a drought, to me, drought ko Urdu mein kya kehte hain? Kahat. Kahat sali kahat. Kahat sali ho jaye. Then you, you, you beg him and he will remove it. They'll remove the drought. وَإِنْ كُنْتَ بِأَرْضِ قَفْرٍ أَوْ فَلَاتٍ فَظَلَّتْ رَاحِلَتُمْ فَدَعَوْتَهُ رُدَّهَا عَلَيْهِ جب تم کسی چٹیل زمین پر میدان سے گزر رہے ہو اور تمہارا سواری گم ہو جائے اور تم اس سے اس کو پکارو تو وہ تمہارے سواری کو واپس کر دے یہاں one of the beauties is that رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اللہ کی طرف دعوت دے رہے ہیں yani, and this is unfortunately something which is missing in our we like to talk about technical things but we don't talk about Allah تو دیکھو ایک دیہاتی آئے ہیں رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے پاس جابر ابن سلیم he comes to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asks him a very simple question Anta Rasool Allah, are you the messenger of Allah? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asaan hai jawab mein ye farma deyte ke haa mein Allah ka Allah ke Rasool hoon lekin ye nahi farmaya balke farmaya ke Allah ke Rasool koon hai who is Allah's messenger? Who is Allah? Who is Allah? Ke alladhi idha asabaka dhurrun da'a you know when you when you call him then he removes your worries and difficulties to is baat se inke dil mein itna taasir hua ke wo islam ko bol kar le aaye so he he accepted islam and then he now says that you know and this was the beauty of uh, the sahaba that they would ask rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for nasihat they would ask for advice from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or in only Amari liye yani they, they have left these pearls for us because they, they were fortunate they got to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they asked for advice and these advice have now got to us to in only Aap sallallahu alayhi wa sallam se farmaya ke e ahad ilayhi ke mujhe kuch nasihat farmaya yani give me some nasihat give me some advice right so now listen to these advice Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first advice that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave to him was La tasubbanna ahadan La tasubbanna ahadan Ke tum kisi ko bhi ghali mat dena Kisi ko ghali Yani la tasubbanna Never swear at anyone This is the advice of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ek or riwayat mein hai کہ حضور نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا کہ لیس المؤمن بالطعان ولا اللعان ولا الفاحش ولا البدی کہ یہ مومن کی شان اس میں سے نہیں ہے کہ وہ کسی کو تانا دے یا کہ کوئی گالی دے لیس المؤمن بالطعان ولا اللعان مسلمان جو ہے وہ کسرت سے گالی دینے والا اور تانا زنی اور یہ کرنے والا نہیں ہے یہ مسلمان کے شان میں سے ہی نہیں ہے it's not from the believer that he uh, curses someone, he swears at someone. So in this uh, narration, dekho, aajkal jo hai, Allah ta'ala hamari hifazat for my Allah safeguard us and protect us. But I don't know what's going to happen on the day of judgment when our book of deeds will be open and how many swear words will be on that book of deeds. Imagine, imagine what will be our situation. So we really need to work on this. <coughs> ہمارے یہاں تو رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے منافقوں کی جب علامت بیان فرمائی پھر نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم was informing the people of some of the signs of recognizing a منافق of a hypocrite then he said وَإِذَا خَاصَمَ فَجَرَا یعنی when he argues with you then he will use foul language so foul language using Foul language is something that is against the teachings of Islam. We are taught that when we are angry, then we say, Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. So who doesn't get angry here? Everyone gets angry, right? But we, when we, when someone angers us, then we should seek protection from Allah, from Shaitan, because that's the, that's the best target now for Shaitan. The best moment for him to overtake us is whilst we are angry.
So when a person says, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, then now Shaitan was getting close to him, now he moves away from him. So, La Tasubbanna Ahad. Jabir ibn Sulaim, the first advice that Rasulullah gave to Jabir ibn Sulaim, radiallahu anhu, was Musalman way, Abi Musalman way. On Nasiyat Mangre, he's just accepted Islam, he's asking Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for some advice, and the first advice Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives to him is not namaz paro, zikr karo. Tilawat karo. Ye bhi bohat zaruri hai. Lekin iske saath saath zaban ki hifazat bhi bohat zaruri hai. So yes, he didn't say to him, perform your salah and do dhikr and tilawa. He could have given, gave that advice as well because it's also very important. But he said, la tasubban na ahadan kisi ko gali na do. Don't swear at anyone. Ulama have said that the word sub, the word, yani to, 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 ye jo tasubba. Or sabba ya subbu ka ek matlab hai gali dena. One is to swear at someone, and the other one is to write someone off. What do I mean by writing someone off? Kisi ko bura na samajna. La ta subba na ahadan. Kisi ko bura na samajna. Don't think that someone is completely gone. Hamare din me hume ye taaleem di gayi hai. कि कोई गुनाह करने वाला हो तो गुनाह से नफरत करो गुनाह से नफरत करो उस गुनाह करने वाले से नफरत ना करो this is a very important principle that is taught to us that when an individual sins or when an individual does something wrong then hate and really look down at this not the sinner but the sin so talk about the the sin that is being committed that this this is really bad you know but do not criminalize or do not make that individual who is committing sin because there is a possibility that that individual enters jannah before me and you there is a possibility Hazrat Thanvi Rahmatullahi alayhi used to always say that I you know, and this is a very powerful thing to do you know to exercise this mindset that he says ke me har bande ko apne se zyada yani behtar samajhta hu har musalman ko har musalman ko every believer is better than me this is something that he had worked on for many months and years till the extent that he got to a level where he saw every believer to be better than himself and then he goes to a, another step and he says har kafir ko bhi ihtimalan main apne se behtar samajhta hu even the non believer ihtimal ka matlab ye hai ki there's a possibility that even the non believer is better than myself why? Because in the first step, if he, if he, you know, recites the kalima before he passes away, then he's entered jannah, and he could put me to, he could put me behind. So this is why, my dear friends, the word la tasubbanna ahadan. One meaning is do never swear at anyone. Never swear at anyone. And this is something which we really need to work on. You know, we get angry, then those words start coming out. And, and there, you know, at one time, we didn't listen to the words of our mouth. And then when they used to sometimes say it, then we used to think, ooh, you know, they don't have a mouth. Right? Isn't that the case? Hamari jo bade hote the, we we never used to hear them swearing, and then all of a sudden they've said some you know swear word, like even from my own uh, parents, never heard them swearing, right? And then all of a sudden, sometimes you know we used to hear them, and we're like, oh, oh, oh this war, oh, right? Ab to ye normal ho gaya hai. It's become a norm, isn't it? Children are growing up, and they're hearing us you know swearing. So for them. For them, it's it's a normal thing. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Lay salmu minu bi ta'an, wal al-ma'an, wal al-fahish, wal al-badi." That a believer does not swear, he does not curse. A believer doesn't uh, say horrible things to people. So la tasubban na ahadan. So that's the first advice. And, and obviously, like I've mentioned, the, the word tasubban na ahadan, la tasubban na ahadan. One means one meaning is don't swear at anyone. And another one is do not say anything bad about anyone. Do not say anything bad about anyone. If, if there are qualities in a person that are bad, talk about the qualities, not about, not about the person. <coughs> Because that person can can really put us behind and enter into Jannah before we do. Umar radiallahu anhu, look at the incident of Umar radiallahu anhu. A very big example for us. Can you imagine an individual who is prepared to go and assassinate the Nabi of Allah, the Rasul of Allah, the Habib of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But that very same individual was the reason for Islam to spread around the world. So, 
ہم جو ہے کسی کو گالی بھی نہ دیں اور کسی کو برا نہ سمجھیں چونکہ معلوم نہیں کہ وہ ہم سے پہلے جنت میں داخل ہو جائے اور ہمیں پیچھے چھوڑ کے ہمارا جو حسر ہے کیا ہو سو مائی ڈیئر فرینڈس تو دس از جابر ابن سلیم رضی اللہ عنہ از کم ٹو نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہیز آس اے کوشچن سمپل کوشچن دا ایو دا رسول اب اللہ ایو دا نبی اللہ نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہی گیوز اے ویری سمپل آنسر ہی ایکسپٹس اسلام اینڈ دین ہی آس رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم فار سم ایڈوائس دا فرسٹ ایڈوائس دیٹ نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم گیوز از دا ون دیٹ وی ہیو جسٹ کورڈ دیٹ لا تسبن احد اینڈ یو نو دا صحابہ وا امیزنگ بائی دی وے دے وا امیزنگ لوک اپ وات دس صحابی سیز یہ ابھی صحابی بنے ہیں Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave him advice that la tasubba, don't swear at anyone. So look at his response. He says, فَمَا سَبَبْتُ بَعْدَهُ حُرًّا وَلَا عَبْدًا وَلَا بَعِيرًا وَلَا شَاتًا After this, nasiha, is nasiha ko sunne ke baad, azad ko chhoro, minne kabhi kisi gulam ko bhi gali nahi di. Or gulam ko chhoro, minne kisi janwar ko bhi gali nahi di. And can you imagine that? This is the level of ita'ah, obedience that the Sahaba had, that when they would hear something from the, from the blessed uh, lips of Rasulullah sallallahu from the blessed kalam of Rasul, from the blessed words of Rasulullah they would take it and they would truly embody this in their, in their life. And he said that after that, when I heard this, I have never, I have never sworn. Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi he says, from the time I heard that ghibat, ghibat, is is haram then from the rest of my life i have never done ghibat of anyone bahut badi baat hai aaj kal to hamare majalis ghibat ke baghair wo boring hote hain right we don't have a we can't have a nice gathering with the boys without any ghibat we need to have some gossip right but these were individuals who uh, when they heard and when they found out as young children that ghibat is something that is bad they would stop and for the rest of their lives they never would do ghibat in their lives So nevertheless, that was the first uh, nasiha. The second nasiha which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave to uh, Jabir ibn Sulaim was La tahqiranna min al-ma'rufi shay'a La tahqiranna min al-ma'rufi shay'a Nekiyo me se kisi bhi neki ko tum haqarat ki nazar se na dekna Do not belittle even uh, from, from the neki, from, from good deeds Min al-ma'ruf Do not belittle even the slightest of good deed. Because we don't know which one. There are many things that we do in our lives. In our eyes, they are very small. But in the sight of Allah, th- that one amal, that one amal is the reason for our entry into Jannah. حضرت ابو داود رحمۃ اللہ علیہ جو بہت بڑے محدث ہے جن یہ جو حدیث شریف میں آپ کے سامنے بیان کر رہا ہوں تو یہ امام ابو داود رحمۃ اللہ علیہ نے نقل فرمایا ہے تو ان کے بارے میں آتا ہے کہ کسی کشتی میں سوار یعنی ہی واز آن اے شپ اینڈ ہی سم ون سیڈ سم ون سنیزڈ لک دس لا تحقیرن من المعروف شیئا that do not belittle even a single deed a single good deed so someone sneezed and he said alhamdulillah and he heard uh, the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that from the rights of the believer muslim ke huquq mein se ek haq ye bhi hai ke jab wo cheek mare sorry is it cheek is that the right word right so when he sneezes and he says alhamdulillah then you should reply to him by saying yarhamukallah right may allah have mercy on you Right, such a beautiful thing by the way <laughs> like our deen is full of love that the person sneezes and you say Allah have mercy on you it doesn't teach you hatred it teaches you love when you love someone that's when you will say that may Allah have mercy on you <clears throat> right <laughs> so he, he wanted to say ya rahmatullah to him but he couldn't because he was on the ship and the wo kashti chali gayi thi to fir kya kiya ke because in those days to cross from one 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 land to the other you know that was the thing you know you you just basically pay a few dinars or dirhams sorry dirhams and it'll take you from one place to another so this person sneezed so he wanted to say that ya rahmatullah so he quickly got off from the boat he paid another person he said take me back so ek yani you can say for one pound or something he paid one pound he said take me back so he came back and he said to the person brother you said alhamdulillah i just wanted to reply alhamdulillah may allah have mercy on you right so then is that so that's a small thing right small thing he gets back on the boat again on the ship and he's now going and he hears a sound from the unseen that abu dawood you bought jannah for one pound today jannah is yours 
So ye la tahkiranna min al ma'ruf shay'a. We should never belittle even any yani any deed. Ye jo aurat thi Hazrat Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam ki masjid ki safai karti thi. Yani aajkal to hum safai karne ko you know if anyone's doing safai we look down at them. So we we'll, I respect you but I can't respect you because you're a cleaner, right? Allah ki deen ke saath jiska bhi koi taalluq ho jaye na to bahut badi baat hai. Deen ho, masjid ho, madrasa ho. You know like I could, I, I've told you this before and you, you you might fall asleep if I tell you again. But wo jo aajkal you know when you're teaching in a madrasa then uh, you you're all of a sudden your your status goes down. So once I was sitting uh, with a family member, a uh, far distant relative, and he said to me, so what do you do? Like, so uh, I just wanted to like kind of, I just said, yeah, I, I teach in a madrasa. Right? He said, so what else do you do then? Like, that's, so he kind of, you know, when it comes to anything got to do with the deen, our connection with the deen, it's like we, we look, or ye kaam jo, ye, ye jo, jin, jo hamare mulk mein jinnoh ne uh, ye kiya tha na, I don't want to go into detail, but that was their purpose. When they came into our country, at that time, deen ki bohot bari azmat thi. There, there was a lot of respect for deen. There was a lot of respect for ulama. And, and they've passed. Look, look at us. We're products of their efforts. <laughs> right? Because they made the deen so much of a mess, so much of a mess, that the ulama also see the people very low. So, in this case, the woman who was that woman, she used to sometimes clean the masjid. Masjid Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we go there, we see that there are people cleaning. Right? So, we give them money. I gave one person money. And he said to me, better, mujhe iski zarurat nahi hai. So, because our ustad taught us that if you want to give someone money, give them the money because they'll need it. Right? They might need it, sorry. So he said, better, mujhe iski zarurat nahi hai. So I was young, I was only 17. Right? And he, he said, better, mujhe iski zarurat nahi hai. So I said, uh, you know, okay. <laughs> right? I just put it back, mujhe iski zarurat nahi hai. <laughs> right? I need it then. So then he said to me that I am a retired general from Pakistan. <laughs> Right, and I've come here to spend the rest of my life in Medina Munawwara and he's cleaning. Right? So Allah gave us those intentions so we could do that. And if not in, in Tingi Masjid Nabi, then at least here. Hum apni zindagi de de Allah ki deen ke khatir. Kya hai? Right? So anyway, um, this woman passes away now. So she used to clean the masjid sometimes here and there. She passes away and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't see her for a few days. Doesn't see her for a few days. And then, um, one day Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asks the Sahaba, Ke wo aurat ka hai? Uh, And then the Sahaba say, oh yeah, so she passed away in the night, we buried her, we, we read her janazah, we didn't want to wake you up, we didn't want to give you taklif, you know, why should we wake you up for me? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, why didn't you inform me? And he wasn't happy. He went and he read janazah on her grave. And obviously the mas'ala is you don't do that. But this is one of the khususiyat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he went and he read janazah, made dua of janazah for her at her grave. This is la tahkiranna min al ma'rufi shay'at. Do not belittle even one. Yani, ham to isko for us all. You should clean the masjid, right? But this is, my, my dear friends, this is the advice, uh, like that woman who fed, you know, gave water to the dog, a thirsty dog. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, for that Allah will give her Jannah. So, hum kisi bhi neki ko meri hakir na samjhe. Or, or fir, you know, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then gives an example to this sahabi. The third advice that he gives him is, wa anta kallama akhaka wa anta munbasitun ilayhi wajhu. That when you speak to your brother, smile and speak. He's giving this advice to him. When you speak to your brother, when you speak to your brothers, smile. We shouldn't take it to be something small. And then, uh, and then Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives us the opposite. Right? There are, there are certain sins that we say, oh, but it's small, isn't it? it's fine, we'll get away with it. So then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that, warfa um, izarak. Apne izar ko, you know your izar, raise it. Ila nisfis saq, to, to mid, to the middle of your shin. And he said that, uh, fa in abayta, and if you don't want to do it up to there, then fa ilal ka'bain, at least up to your ankles, but not below that. Why? Wa iyaka wa isbal al izar. 
اپنے اظہار کو اپنے تخنوں کے نیچے رکھنے سے بچ بچ کے رہنا ہے Save yourself from your, taking your izar below your ankle. Why? فَإِنَّهَا مِنَ الْمَخِيلَ Because it is from arrogance. And Rasulullah صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے یہ نہیں فرمایا کہ ارادہ ہے تو پھر arrogance ہے ارادہ نہیں ہے تو پھر arrogance نہیں ہے He just made it very clear that your izar goes below your ankle then you are from those who have arrogance. And then he said وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمَخِيلَ Allah does not love those who have خیالہ those who have arrogance in them so میرے عزیزو یہ چند نصیحتیں ہیں I'll just quickly finish the last one off he said if anyone swears at you or says something about you that you know is in you he said if anyone says something to you and hurts you and says something that you know that is in you then فَلَا تُعَيِّرْهُ بِمَا تَعْلَمُ فِيهِ then don't say something back that you know that is in him it's a beautiful نصیحہ Someone said you're like this and X, Y, and Z, and you know he's also X, Y, and Z. <laughs> Rasulullah said, just take it on. Just, just you know, don't don't say that oh you've said this such and such a thing about me. Then let me just tell you, you're also X, Y, and Z. Iski zarurat nahi hai because fa inna ma wabalu dalika alay. Because you know whatever he said, the harm that's going to come on him is going to come on him. You don't need to now tell him. So Allah Taala may be in nasiyatu par amal karne ki. Tofiq ta'afir ma'is wa hamalallahu alaihi wasallam.